Yeah, because I was a bit confused with the manifesto thing about you need to initiate. And in my experience, whenever I just, you know, straight ahead, like went for something, mm -hmm. that didn't work out very well, you know? Right. Like, yeah. yeah, that makes sense to, to see still that there is a projector aspect or this waiting. Yeah, because that's been my experience that if if I do my thing and then people come to me saying with I'm now teaching in a meditation teacher training which is amazing and which mm -hmm. came to me in a very good moment where I was perfectly ready to do welcome to whole and unleashed a podcast about coming home to ourselves I'm your host Jessica Locke a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hello, welcome to another expansion session. Today's conversation was recorded during summer of 2023 last year, and Yana is a 4 one splenic manifester who wrote in the following. I often struggle with the combination of a strong drive and few defined motor centers. I would love to discuss informing and ways of getting support that are well matched with my profile. Right now, I'm in the process of making the jump from having a small supporting job alongside my freelance business, which is around meditation, mindfulness, and yoga. And I'm all about creating structures, schedules, and offers that support my energy with all its ebbs and flows. And in this session, we definitely dived into that and a lot more. We covered how informing can look like and what it isn't about. We also talked about the fixedness of the four of one juxtaposition profile there's a little bit of aloofness that comes often with it. It's a very fixed path. And what does that mean? How does that look like? We also talked about being an indirect manifester with two projected channels. Now, this does not mean she's here to act as a projector, but rather discerning how this nuance informs her energetic expressions. If you're reading the blog or even watching this, I'll include her chart up throughout so you can reference what we're talking about. We also dived a little bit about her concerns around not being soft enough. We also talked about her gate five along with the fixedness of the 4-1, the importance of having very specific routines and rituals to ground and settle into herself, how to relish in that instead of seeing it as a bad thing. We also talked about her completely open G-Center and how that guides her along with her 4816 channel of the wavelength and so much more. Let's dive in. Hi, welcome, Hi. Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> so nice to finally see you and hear you. Likewise, to meet you, I guess, digitally. <laughs> I'm so excited. You wrote to me maybe a month, a few months ago about... First, about being a 4-1, I remember you sent me a DM <laughs> about it. <laughs> I think it was one of the expansion sessions that you had listened to. Yeah, yeah. And I was fangirling a bit <laughs> with your account and how I like it. And yeah, because it's so tricky to find information about the 4-1 profile. And yeah, I think she had similar lines. Yeah, similar lines. 4-1, it's very unique because the 4-1 is kind of a lot about foundations foundations of like your own inner world and foundations of how you will be sharing with others we can dive into this a little bit deeper but before I thought it would be nice to introduce your design you a little bit more you're a 4-1 manifester and I know some of the comments you said was about like if your birth were a little bit different by like a few minutes you could be a projector and you would have a defined center in the identity as well. I don't know. I mean, like 
with those bath times you never exactly know I mean I, I'm still confused how people yeah. figure that out like when is the exact minute you're born right so it's yeah. always hard to like pinpoint one exact minute and from playing with this generator for the chart I think what I saw was that I would still be a manifester, but the G center would either be defined or undefined. Mm -hmm. And my parents just gave me a range when I was born. Like right, right. You know, some sometime between 12, 12, 30. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And I just figured I'd probably probably have an undefined G center just from what I've read and stuff, but mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure. Right, right. And that's such a good point to bring up because sometimes even when, you know, hospitals do record it at the exact moment, they might round it up and that could sometimes change something in our chart. So I think it's a good opportunity to even play from it, right, to learn, oh, this is what it means to be a projector. I think I resonate more with a manifester and then keep exploring because it's very hard to get an exact accurate time. <laughs> yeah. So Using this as a 4-1 manifester, how did you feel when you first read about this? What resonated, what not so much? Yeah, it's funny because first I, like a friend told me about human design. She was like, I can read your chart. We had a mix up with the AM and the PM with 12. I was born around noon and we took like at night. Mm -hmm. So first I thought I was 4-6, I think. And I was like, yeah, maybe that's true. Don't know. <laughs> and then I checked again and then the full one definitely made a lot of sense and being a manifester as well, because like the whole experience, the repelling aura, I'm sure we're going to right, talk about right. it, but that I've noticed quite clearly in everyday interactions. And it's quite nice to have like a description of it and just be aware of it and see the usefulness of it at, um, as well because I always thought I'm just weird <laughs> right right yes like thank you for bringing that up because when people read or when I first started learning like what does it mean to repel others but it's almost yeah. like it protects your own aura so that the other aura doesn't get to influence you or interrupt your process as much because you're someone who's here as a manifester to bring something new into the world and you have a way to manifest bring that whatever vision it is whatever you see into life and the repelling aura is really to protect you from others it's dense and it's something that maybe as a kid might have felt really weird like why do people not understand me perhaps or like why they don't want to connect with me is that something that you found until you read about this yeah like my whole life like people either being awkward and me being awkward around people because I noticed this kind of there is some friction going on and also I mean some people are attracted right it's it's you always get a reaction immediately from people and they either like go away or they're like find you really interesting right. <laughs> and, and both was like I couldn't figure out why because for me like inside this aura it's very normal and I already to me it's not palpable right I can't understand what people react to but this seeing how much I need to have my own projects and how much I need this little cave to go into and just work on my own stuff like even now when I sometimes in meditation going back to you know when you were a kid when you were really like happy and everything was good there are always images of me just working on some project mm -hmm. <laughs> alone which is also not what I've been brought up to think of being good in a way you know like being with people and being nice is good and being connected to others is good which is true and which I feel but still I really it took me some time to figure out that it's okay to need that much alone time because it's like, I need so much alone time. Yeah. yeah. And it helped for that to see that. Yeah. Because you also have a bit of an openness. I'll share the screen with you so you can take a look at what I'm talking about as well. I mean, let me know if you can see it. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the manifestors is a type by itself. It's almost like you're designed to work alone, do things, create on your own because you have like this urge. The manifestor goes through periods of like rest, but also an urge. I want to create. I want to make something happen. And then you also have openness. You have three centers defined. So you have six undefined where you're like picking up information, amplifying, even though your aura is still, you know, dense, you still pick it up from other people. So the alone time is actually where you release a little bit and you get back to, okay, what do I want to create for myself? What did I pick up that it was useful for me? And then how do I bring it forward? Of course, that's not exactly at like a logical it's almost like I just want to be alone I don't know how to express that and then the four one the it's known as like a just a position cross it's like a very fixed cross where you're kind of doing your own thing and somebody once described it to me it's almost like you're going through your train tracks and you have a very specific path you don't know where you're going but it might be foggy ahead of you but nobody can really deter you <laughs> it's almost like you're not going to detour for anybody and the people that come into light into your life they might either be part of the ride or they're like okay I don't want to go where you're going it's not for me or you're like okay want to ride along to whatever I'm creating come join my journey so it's almost like I'm going there it doesn't matter what people are saying what people are doing I just know I'm going somewhere <laughs> is that something that resonates with you yeah, and also allowing myself to be that fixed because, right. again, like the same with being with people as being good is like being flexible, compromising, you know, learning to see things a different way, do things differently. I could just couldn't do it. I mean, I could pretend to do it, but I just couldn't really do it or it wasn't. It just wasn't good for me and to to have again this confirmation of that's like how it's supposed to be and what's actually useful for me and hopefully for other people as well is quite nice because otherwise I could get into telling myself that no, no I just need to get over it you know it's just mm -hmm. me being difficult or me not trying to be too comfortable, too lazy to change or whatever, and relaxing into being that fixed, even though I, you know, with everything I do with a lot of meditation, yoga and stuff, it's all about opening yourself up and having like expand your, how you view the world. It's quite, it's not what I expected to then have this fixed path. <laughs> no <laughs> right right yeah and the fixedness really comes from the one which is the known as the investigator and they're the we often use the house metaphor of the profiles of how everything works together I can go through it really quickly the first one is like the investigator is what provides the foundation of the house the foundation of the hexagram the foundation of you know the world that we live in so they want to use the strongest materials they love to spend time alone researching investigating it's like does this work what is the best material to break to build a house what is the best material so they're not designed to be flexible because they're not here to be like let me change let me change the foundation you can't once you build the foundation you can't rip it up you will have to rip the entire house so the nature is actually part of your strength like you're not here to be flexible like you might be difficult labeled as difficult by like outside people and stories but I think you know it's also part of like standing your ground and understanding okay when do we actually do compromise you know for the greater good for you and me and also when do I have to stay grounded in my morals and values my time my energy you know that the Ability, that foundation is so important because sometimes it also teaches others to also like oh I need to stay grounded too I need to stay rooted too and then the first line also has a bit of an insecurity because they're always researching they're always reading they like there's probably something I can do better to make my foundation stronger so they want to spend a lot of time to research a lot of time alone a lot of time just reading for the pleasure of it because that's how they build their foundation and continue to nurture it so the inflexibility and 
the need to really want to retreat is a good way to build their strength, but also remembering that what you know, like you are already an authority, you already know a lot. You probably read a lot more books and topics from whatever you're interested in. You talked about yoga, meditation, you know, compared to other people. So how can you still share when you're feeling a little bit like, oh, I need to be more secure. It's almost like what drives you. The drive to be secure is what drives you to be an amazing investigator. But don't let that pull you back from, I want to try this. When is it the time to externalize? Which is when your fourth line comes. And the fourth line in the place of the house, we started with the first line, which is the foundation. Then the, we have the second line, which is the person that's kind of like the natural. They have skills. They're like chilling in the house. And they're doing their own thing. They might be painting the house. They might be dancing around. And they're here to be called out by other people. Hey, you have these skills. Help around with the house. How can you externalize or share with us those natural skills that you are harvesting that you are cultivating by yourself without getting super deep into it you know the hermit line and then we have the third line which is the person that's going up and down the stairs and they're here to basically break the foundation like look for the cracks in the foundation what's not working let's break it what are the problems let's find it let's pull it out and that can be very destabilizing for the first line that's like what are you doing I've built this thing why are you trying to break it but you know that's what helps find the cracks in the foundation. So the third line is the profile in the hexagram that is really like externalizing. And they're also moving between the first and the second floor of the house. They're like, let me share what didn't work. Let me share with the collective. Let me, you know, play around. And then we have the fourth line, which is like, okay, the second floor of the house has been built. So what do we do now? What are the opportunities that we can bring into the house? Oh, can we do a house party? What people will, you know, help paint the house? What other people will help us foster, you know, better connections? Like, how do we work with people? That's why it's known as the opportunists. And being kind of like the foundation of the second floor, because they're here to oversee what else we can bring into the house. It is also not flexible in that sense. It's here to talk and meet many different people, but it's also like, no, I, this is my people or this is not like you're welcome in my house or you're not. <laughs> That's the kind of the energy, what opportunities work or what people are not for me. So they really have a natural sense of people, people that are for them or not for them. And others might not understand that something that often gets brought up is like the friendliness of the fourth line like you can be everybody's friend you can be very adaptable but then you can also feel it in your body in your whatever authority is like well maybe that person's not for me so there's friendliness fatigue where you know the friendliness allow you to connect but then after a while you're like mm, if this person is not for me or like if I've connected too much I'm a bit exhausted I need to retreat so both of these lines together as a four one you will feel the again, the inflexibility, like, I just want to stay in my own, I've met a few people today, I don't want to see anybody. And again, that is just part of your design of like honoring your energy, when is it time to retreat? And also, what are the people that will actually bring the opportunities or will allow you to move the opportunities and share with others? That is basically like the goal of it. And then we have the five and the six. So the fifth line is similar to the person, the second line, that's like the hermit, but they're on the second floor and they're here about pragmatic solutions. They're kind of like, okay, the entire house has been built. There's people like, you know, Q&A testing it. There's some skills, natural skills that are coming from the house, but being on the second floor, they're receiving projections from others. It's almost like this figure, this mysterious figure on the second floor. And they're known as the heretic because they see a lot of things that might not be working and they want to share those solutions. But being on the second floor, people can't really see them clearly in order for them to really universalize, to share those solutions. The projections from people is what helps them share with more. I think I tangled myself there. <laughs> they, they need the projections in order to universalize their solutions because that's what they're here to do as a heretic they might say things that people don't it's shocking for people at first it's almost like they're ahead of their time because they really just want to bring everything from the house and like okay we have this knowledge we have this wisdom we also see the things that are not working now let's start moving and 
telling people about it. It's like an authority figure. They also use the example of like a president or like a general. You have an assumption of who they are, of their power, of their authority, but you never really know who they are. Everything that we know is filtered through either, you know, their social media, how they present themselves. So we project on them like a president or like a prime minister, a prime minister should be someone who has good values. They should be a good family person. They should be, you know, all the shoulds that we project on them, that is not necessarily aligned, but those projections allow them to like, okay, this is my power. How do I externalize my, my beliefs, my values, my solutions? And they need to learn how to manage those projections. That went a lot deeper and confusing than I expected. <laughs> and then we have the sixth line, which is um, the person that is on top of the house they're on like the rooftop the house has been built it's managing itself it's improving it's growing now they're like okay let's look at other houses it has like a bird's eyes view it's here to share you know some of their objectives some of their subjective truths and it's it goes through three different stages of their lives in order to be a role model the first one the first first to 30 years they live as a martyr as a third line where they're testing things they're like bumping into all the things in trial and error and then towards the second phase they're here to really retreat that's when they're on the roof they're like okay I you know mingle around people I've tested this thing I'm kind of wanting to recover to like step back a little bit and then towards the late 40s to the rest of their lives that's when they come back down and engage with the rest of the world and share and role model everything they've learned to embody what they've learned with the rest of the collective so we kind of have the <laughs> the full house now <laughs> cool I find it really helpful like because I get curious and then I figure out like everybody's chat and <laughs> it's yeah. it quite fun to to see ah yeah that, that's this profile and that's a generator and that's a, another manifesto it's really cool yeah yeah thank you can you also what's your profile uh, I mean, you're a projector yeah I'm a four six so I resonate with the fourth line of like yeah mm -hmm. like this is who I am I can connect with other people but also like sometimes I really need the time to just back off <laughs> and retreat and then the sixth line and I'm on my second phase like technically known as on the roof where I'm in my little cocoon <laughs> I'm like okay world I'll come I'll engage when I want but I'm also just taking my sweet time recovering <laughs> from the first 30 years which you know to be fair a lot of people we go through our Saturn return so after the first 30 years of our life we're really just digesting what happened but someone with a six line profile it's even like this energy that's moving us to okay take it easy now like retreat resettle and then before we go back into the world again <laughs> nice yeah yeah how so one of the things that you mentioned about as well was informing as a manifester tell me what do you understand by informing so far well, I've learned that it's the strategy and that for manifestors, they're the only ones where the strategy is not actually what comes naturally or what is kind of an inner drive to use, but rather something that helps to get people out of the way or on the bandwagon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I find it because it doesn't come naturally, I find it quite confusing because I'm so happy in my little cave and in my project working bubble, you know, that there's never the time where I'm like, now I'm going to tell everybody and bring them along. You know, it's also, yeah, I never know when to tell people about what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. I think especially with what you said about the first line never knowing when it's enough right now I'm back at uni I'm studying again to mm -hmm. feed that <laughs> need to to dive in and even there you know you can always continue I'm doing a bachelor's degree now and I'm like yeah, I don't even have a PhD in that I why would I talk about anything right. and still I find with because I study around mindfulness as well so it's directly connected to what I do and I'm sure it's interesting to people but yeah knowing what to share when to share with whom to share <laughs> mm. 
it's quite tricky. Yeah, yeah, that's those are big questions, I think. And yeah, the strategy, the manifester, they technically the way it is described in many like texts and people's interpretations and even their some people's experience is like they're the only type that almost doesn't have to wait for others before they move their energy. What they do have to wait is their own energetic guidance, their own authority, their own urge. That's what I feel the importance of emphasizing because when we read about it, it's almost like, oh, I want to be a manifest or like, why can I do things whenever I want? It's not exactly that. It's almost like when you get the urge, when your strategy is aligned, when your authority is aligned, then you can move informing is basically the step where you're telling people hey heads up this is what I'm doing and it can look in very different ways it can be as subtle as you know telling your partner or your family whoever you're living with it's like hey I'm gonna go for a walk for a 30 minute walk it's not as like let me make an announcement let me make an Instagram live because especially because it feels so unnatural at first I also heard from someone who was sharing that the informing part was really like not politics, but it's almost like how do we live and understand each other better? So maybe it's going to change as we move forward, but it's almost like right now because we're trying to get to know each other and people are either fascinated by you or like tune into you. When you do start your energy, when you do initiate, it's almost like this. Imagine you're just like very powerful car engine or whatever, whatever powerful machine here that's like starting right like and when once you start sometimes it can startle people for some reason because it's this power coming it's like what is happening and then the informing is really just hey heads up gonna do this and it's not really asking for permission not at this stage maybe as a as a child you had to ask for permission like can I do this? Can I do that? So I don't get into trouble. But as an adult, as you're learning to move your way around, it's almost like heads up, this is what I'm doing. And then you can just let your power flow. Otherwise, when you don't inform, when you start doing your own thing, the people that are in your life, they might be, what is Yana doing? Where did she go? It's almost like they're kind of tapped into you and they have no idea what's going on. They just want to be informed, be like, okay, she's doing this. So whatever power you're unleashing, they can either don't feel left out or know like, okay, get out of their way. If that made it any more sense. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Like, I still find it confusing because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you right. know, it's like I get this urge and know, oh, this is, you know, with a plan. I, I just get sucked into working and yeah. I have like some kind of idea, but I can't describe it. Yeah, to anybody yeah. really like and then going out being like I'm doing something <laughs> right right okay I love that you brought this part because just because you're informing is like okay I'm about to head out or I need 30 minutes it doesn't mean that you need to provide the details because again your energy is building up about to like pour somewhere somehow that you need to get moving when you spend time with people explaining what you're about to do, that can also almost like deflate your energy mm -hmm. because it's like, oh, I'm willing to go there. And just like, wait, I need to tell you. So informing does not mean that. Informing simply means I need 30 minutes by myself or maybe it's a practice of like, hey, I want to do this with my career. Or like I'm feeling pulled to do this. It's less about explaining what you're doing. And especially in your chart, you have a completely open identity center so your direction where you're going or like what you're diving into you don't really know until you you do it until you're in that moment so I think the pressure of feeling that we need to explain ourselves to other when informing can also interrupt the process that's supposed to support us yeah, yeah that, that sounds <laughs> sounds about right like yeah yeah um because I find it so tricky because I have no clue what I'm doing in a way, you know, what my direction is or people often ask like, what's your purpose? And you mm -hmm. need to find your one thing in life. And I've done so many things, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, I don't, does it have to do with it? 
Jisan, because wh whatever I do, <laughs> I'm always like the in-between person. Like, for example, I used to dance and then I did like all sorts of dance, like hip hop, Bollywood, Oriental dance, African dance, ballet, jazz, like everything. And so I, I was always too too much of a hip hop person for ballet or too much of a ballet person for hip hop, mm -hmm. you know, this kind of being kind of tapped into everything and having a good understanding of it, but not really being part of it. Mm -hmm. And the same was when I started working, I worked in digital agencies before, like as a project manager. And as a project manager, again, I came in without having studied for that job or, you know, I found my way um, through yeah. the side door. And again, my role was kind of, I could tap into what all the teams were doing. I had some idea about graphic design, some idea about copywriting, some idea about programming stuff like IT, but wasn't really part of any of the teams. And again, that was a similar role. So that makes me curious if that is somewhere in my chart or if that's just you know something that happened yeah yeah definitely so with the undefined open g center g center is your center for like self the roles that you play direction having it completely open means that you're meant to be almost like a chameleon you're here to try test many things and be a manifester you're never fully here to be identified by just one thing and you also have the 4816, and that's also known as the channel of the wavelength. You're here to experiment. You're here to like share your depth. You're here to master something. And then with the completely open G center, you may drop it. Doesn't mean that you don't resonate with that anymore. It just simply means like in the moment you're guided to embody something else to dive into something else so I love the example that you use of like your different dances you were never quite specifically typecast into one but that's because of your fluidity you're meant to specialize like go very deep into whatever topic of interest and then when it feels like enough when the center and your authority is telling you wait I'm done What's the next thing I want to dive into? That's almost like the skills that you've mastered becomes a part of your, your skills, your toolbox. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure a lot of the dance practices, the movement and all that also feeds into meditation, mindfulness, whatever you're feeling hold to express. It's almost like you find a correlation by diving into it, by becoming those very essence. And then you're like, okay, time to dip my toes somewhere else. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah, because now it's flowing back into my mindfulness practice and I'm developing my own little mindful movement flow that draws from all of that and strala yoga and, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. basically the magic of that center. And when people are like, you should stick into one thing, I think for especially in under, Unidentify G Center, I have an Unidentify and I feel like I've done a little bit of everything and I don't know what else I'm going to do. Some people are like, so human design is your thing. I'm like, I don't think I can say that right now it is. I, you know, I, I don't want to promise that or limit myself because I'm not meant to. Even sometimes those with a defined identity center, they might find that they like to explore different things, but it might look different how that manifests or how that comes out. But you have it completely open so it means that you tap into all the different expression of those gates specifically at any given time you might be tapping into a seven you might be able to lead when you're called for it and also when you're around different kinds of people you can also pull into different aspects of their energy and almost like reflect it back to them maybe how they talk or maybe like their different intonations and it's not like you're imitating them it's almost like you're feeding off that energy and you're just like oh okay let's try it out that's what the center wants to do yeah that makes sense because I really enjoy like being in different surroundings with very different types of people like I enjoy being at the office and meeting all those office people <laughs> and then yeah. I also enjoy being at the dance studio with all those hip-hop dancers or you know being back at uni with all the students like all those very different groups and I feel like I can 
find a connection with all of them and it, it's fun to kind of yeah connect with them and then sample some someplace else <laughs> yeah yeah and like this identity center reflects everything in your environment so people often talked about like it's so important if you have an open identity center to be in places that actually feel good to you like go to more of those places instead of forcing ourselves sometimes to like stay at a place that doesn't feel good but quote unquote might look good on paper like mm-hmm. oh this is an event for business owners and you're trying to build your business but once you go there like your fourth line and giving your identity is like mm, you know instantly if it's a yes or no other times it's like okay let me keep sampling until I make a conclusion other times it knows so when it knows you know move away from those but places that you do enjoy being that's where your opportunities will come from and I know you shared a little bit in the forum about your fourth line about how opportunities have been coming to you from your network can you share a little bit of your reflections and experiences yeah can let's stay with the dance example because you know that was when I was still at school and um, I feel like I wasn't trying to do anything there you know that's like the most yeah but because I was still in school there was not the thought of I need to build something here it was just the pure joy of doing it and so I've been I started quite late when I was 16 and then like a few years later like when I was 18 19 I got asked to do jobs as a dancer and stuff and that all came through people I knew and I always thought because probably because of the needing time alone and maybe the repelling aura I always thought I'm terrible at networking you know and then through the dance experience because then you I never got a job through an audition I always got jobs because people knew me and because actually because I could do all those different styles none of them well maybe a lot well than you better than you think because the one line is always like, I can do better, but yeah. you know. Yeah, but also like the few jobs where you need the mix, then there are not a lot of people who can do it. That's where I came in. Yeah, that's an example. And then in my job as well, I hardly, yeah, I think I never, I never got a job I like applied for in the traditional sense then. I always got rejections, <laughs> even though maybe they were really nice conversations and it was on paper a good fit and never worked out. But then with the jobs I got that were good, it was people coming to me and sometimes out of nowhere and sometimes through connections and asking me, you know, if I could work for them. And yeah. same with what I do now with yoga and meditation. I have people coming to me who went to a dance class with me back when I was 19 and they're coming back now and I'm like oh yeah now now I'm into meditation oh that's amazing oh yeah yeah, something that I was also looking at in your chart so Yana has a defined ego through the 44 26 that connects to her spleen and then her spleen connects to her throat through the 48 16 so you're known as like an indirect manifester because your motor is not directly connected to your throat So the way a lot, your channels, both of your channels are actually projected channels. What does that mean? Ah. So the projected channels, even though you are a manifester, you're here to initiate, you have two projected channels. So those channels are really, you need the recognition and invitation. So working with your fourth line, when you're just busy doing your own thing, when you're like doing your dance, mastering your skills, perfecting it, being in your own curiosity, when you're sharing from the heart, What do you think that will be beneficial for the community? Like, why is meditation, why is mindfulness useful for us? Those that are like in your, let's use network or circle or in your frequency. Maybe that sounds better because I do not like networking either. I'm like, I don't network, not for the way that this world has used network. It's more like your frequency. Those that know you, they're almost like tapped into, oh, what is she doing? And then when they want to work with you or when they find it fascinating, they reach out. That's the recognition. And then you get the invitation. That makes so much sense. Yeah, I can see your body. <laughs> yeah, because I was a bit confused with the manifesto thing about you need to initiate. And in my experience, whenever I just, you know, straight ahead, like went for something, mm-hmm. that didn't 
work out very well you know right. like yeah. yeah that makes sense to to see still that there's a projector aspect or this waiting yeah because that's been my experience that if if I do my thing and mm -hmm. then people come to me same with I'm now teaching in a meditation teacher training which is amazing and which mm -hmm. came to me in a very good moment where I was perfectly ready to do it I was a good fit for the job but I didn't go out and ask people to become like a teacher in a program like that and somebody came to me and was like do you want to do that and I was like how did you find me yes I do yeah that makes so much sense oh I love that and you also brought out such an important I think distinction about initiating and what manifestors are often told you can start whenever you can initiate so initiating can be something as simple as like oh, I want to start this business like out of nowhere. Like, oh, it's like, I want to do that. That's you initiating. Sometimes the initiating also happens by just people coming into your aura, talking about something. You might initiate people into meditation. You know, that kind of initiating. This is what I do. Like simply by sharing, you get to initiate. That's like, you know, your, your ego going through your spleen and then into your throat to like power people. But you don't initiate out of your... I'm like, how do I say this? You don't initiate out of, your, out of your mind, which is what many people believe manifestors do. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because my mom's a projector as well. Mm -hmm. And my dad's a generator. And kind of because I do like working with people and, you know, I want to be of service and do something that's helpful to others, like fun for me and helpful for other yeah. people. And what I've seen is them just being of service in a very different way. And yeah, it was and is tricky for me to figure out how, because I don't have this softness, you know, this like being so cushy for everybody. I'm more like, <laughs> I don't know, like more intense maybe. And understanding how that's helpful as well, because I'm not, as a person, I'm not the person to go around and be like, you need to do this or pushy in that kind of right, way. Right. Go, yeah, but maybe you have some insight into what's helpful about initiating and how that works for others. Because I only know my perspective and I'm a bit unsure in what's helpful about it. <laughs> right, right. It's, I mean, just from talking to you here, you do have the softness. But I think it was it Tara in, from Shrala Yoga who shared or maybe somewhere else where they talked about softness doesn't mean that we accommodate to others. Sometimes, you know, when you look at grass, you know, we get to step on it, but then they bounce back. You know, there is a softness and also a resilience in them. Now, noticing the stories of like, we should be adaptable, we should be flexible. Those are the stories that are sometimes you know, the conditioning from society of how women should behave or how, you know, the cultural thing of how the things we quote unquote should do, but initiating you going after what you want doesn't mean that, you know, you're converting everyone along the way or telling them how to do it. So much of this also happens by you embodying. So if we go back to your 4816, which is the channel of the wavelength, one of the expressions that they use for this is like, you're the dancer that becomes the dance because you spend so much time just rehearsing, practicing that you like kind of just lose yourself and become that energy. You know, that is the beauty that you bring into everything that you do. You've already embodied it. You practice it. So there is the ter determination. There is also a discipline required. And, you know, softness can also be discipline sometimes. Softness is having the courage to try the things even though you don't know where it's going to take you yeah and then something else your 4426 it's a community channel so it's about how can I serve the community we might see things that will work for them so we use a traditional business or advertising like okay tell them these steps tell them the benefits tell them how to show up but then when we try to do it it doesn't lend as much when it comes from that mental space versus 
us sharing from a place of our hearts, like, oh yeah, I love meditating. Or like when we're writing from that space, because it's coming out of us, either an urge, a desire, that energy lands so much more differently. And your community will tell you, oh yeah, Yana, I want more of this. Yes. Or they will, if they don't respond as much, it might be, oh, not right now. So it gives you a guidance of when to, when am I, where am I moving towards a place that is supportive or not? But at the same time, as a manifester, it's almost like when you're following your joy, when you're following the things that you're pa passionate and curious about, people are already tuning in. They're like, hey, I want to try that out. So very long and short, it's really just following the things that feel good to you. Just like when you were a kid, you're dancing because it was fun. And then people are like, what are you doing, Yana? <laughs> hey, Yana, do you want to keep come teach meditation? It's almost like, how can we plant the seeds? And allow people to, you know, pick up the fruits and come to us when they would do want to work with us. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool. And at the same time, it's it's a process of probably especially as a manifester, it sounds very egotistical, you know, mm. like being just do what's fun for me <laughs> also because of the low energy um, you know I'm just napping like all yeah. the time <laughs> and resting so much while other people are busy and then when I have this little spark of energy I just do whatever I want and hate to do what people tell me to do <laughs> and that's a struggle in and of itself like yeah that plays into it as well like have, using the little energy I have to refine what I what I'm into rather mm -hmm. than giving it to the collective you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. yes <laughs> I'm gathering my thoughts because yes going as a manifester with the undefined sacral your energy will come into birth. With that being said, you also have gate five, which is the gate of fixed rhythms, the gate of fixed patterns. This is also about like, okay, in your day to day, how can you have certain routines or certain practices that might be fixed, but that helps you, that helps you nourish yourself, ground yourself so that, you know, you can be prepared for whatever happens when the burst happens or when you're, you know, wanting more rest. Like gate five really needs that fixedness. Again, we're going to add to the fix. Yeah. It really needs your very specific routines. When you're able to honor that, sometimes it helps with your energy and you get more clarity on where should I move? Have you noticed that, you know? <laughs> yeah, big time. Like I'm so set in my <laughs> routines. And at the same time, I find that that's just so helpful like it yeah it, I'm able to be so much more relaxed and calm and get the things done I need to get done and sometimes friends make fun of me for it because I'm so sad on you know yeah. sticking with my bedtime and my morning routine and those days where I can't take a nap I'm like <laughs> struggling yeah but that's again nice nice to know I'm, it's just a lot a lot of fixation I yeah guess. a lot of a lot of fixation <laughs> well kind of like being in your own flow and I think it's so hard at first even as we come into the world as children where we're taught all those things about the things that we should do that our fixedness which is our biggest strength which is what allows us to come create into the world. Because when you allow yourself to really stay fixed and tune out the voices or whatever beliefs they trigger, it's almost like it helps your energy filter through and come through as it needs to come. But also, you know, we live with each other. We're part of an ecosystem. So we're going to be learning how do we become fixed and when do we compromise? When is When does even my authority, your splenic authority, is like, yes, compromise right now versus no like I need this fixedness and it's not you being hard you, not you being difficult because you don't want to be nobody wants to be difficult on purpose but it's almost like your energetic guidance telling you I don't have energy for this or like I need my bedtime to be this way and people can make fun of me but I also know that when I'm trusting myself like 
I am able to create the things I want to do. I am able to even attract the opportunities I want to do. Because when we let our energetics fall into place, it's things are less hard. Things are less difficult and they come to us, like you say, like out of nowhere, but it's almost like it's us taking care of ourselves. That's like the frequency that we're sending to the world. Oh, she has capacity because she's been resting because she took nap. And then somebody said, hey, do you want this opportunity as an example? So I think, you know, you showing up as you start to build your business, as you start to share this we're going to get a lot of business advice. There's so many out there. <laughs> so it's up to us to play and see, oh, does this work for me? And sometimes, you know, there are people who can post five times a day. They love it. For me, the thought of it's like, oh my gosh, I don't have the energy. So release that and say, okay, I trust that the one post I might share once a month right now at this season of my life is exactly what I need to put out there. Yeah, but I just restarted my newsletter <laughs> and um, I used to send it out like every two weeks back when like I did less other stuff <laughs> yeah. but, and back then it was fine because I guess maybe because of this gate as well I'm doing something regularly comes relatively easy to me but now like the last couple of years I just lost it and then it's not nice for people receiving it to get like one newsletter and then three months of nothing and then maybe two you know and now I've, I decided that I'm gonna just send one once a month you know mm -hmm. that's a timing I'm sure I can keep like even if stuff piles up and I have lots to do I can still send like one nice newsletter a month and yeah. Yeah, playing around with that kind of thing where I can, even if I'm in my rest cycle and then new ideas come up and I'm busy <laughs> pursuing that, that I still stay in contact with people and have some consistency there because I guess it's helpful for people to have this consistency. And also I feel like it shares a lot of what people mirror back to me, what they get from being with me like the stability mm -hmm. is something like colleagues feedback a lot of the time like oh you're so calm and you're so <laughs> like yeah. steady all the time and yeah I guess that's my way of allowing my energy to go in those waves where I have no idea how and when and how big this next wave is gonna hit and I still want to be able to connect with people in like a reliable way mm -hmm. yeah can I reflect back on you what you just said right now sure <laughs> your stability is so grounding for others mm. so whenever you know you notice the fixedness or you might notice a little bit of the tension of like what the outside world is telling us and what our body needs just remember like you stay in your fixedness is very stabilizing for others. And the more you embody that, the more it becomes like the tension might melt away, it might be like, oh, okay, I can relax into that. It's not wrong for me to be fixed. And that's how sometimes the little stories just start to shift just by remembering. It's like, right, this is a good thing, actually, even though, you know, other people might operate differently, but I, I'm proud of that. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how do you feel about informing I know we dance up around the topic is it a bit more clear now mm. yes no maybe it's just a matter of doing it and getting a feel for it and I feel like also around informing maybe this project how do you call it projecting projected channel? Yeah, projected. Projected channels. Maybe that's like the, the missing piece of information, actually, for understanding and forming, because I thought that I need to go out and tell everybody what I'm doing and for things to happen. Mm -hmm. And now being just, you know, letting other people know just... I need some alone time or I'm going there, I'm doing this. Yeah, you know, yeah. I can do. Um, 
it, as long as I don't have to run around and explain what I'm doing. And also if I don't have to as much rely on that kind of informing for opportunities to come my way. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if I can relax into, yeah, people will come, the inv- invitations will come if, if I'm just, yeah, stay, share what, what I'm up to or what I need space for, but not like the map of where I'm going because I have yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, hey, I'm trying this out. Come tag along if you want. You know, that can be simple informing. It doesn't have to be, you know, a big sign to tell people. And I think it, it's a lot of pressure. Like, how do I tell people that they're going to ask me questions? Because informing is not necessarily an invitation for people to ask questions. I think that's something good to to remind yourself because the moment you feel the urge stopping it's almost like you need to do a pit stop you know to like hey tell people that if you can do it quickly efficiently your defined heart wants to do it efficiently perfect so you don't spend so much energy all your energy in informing we don't want that like the purpose of informing is like I have this energy that's about to be moved I don't want to be interrupted I don't want people to ask me questions I just need to tell whoever's in my life Heads up, gone for a few days for a meditation retreat. Heads up, I'll tell you when I get back. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm just excited. You know, little things like that, that does not demand you to explain yourself either. Because I think we've also been conditioned to have to explain our decisions to others. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't come easy, especially as a splenic manifester. A lot of your decisions with your urge, it's a moment of your body. It's this inner knowing. It's like, I've got to do this. And we can't explain it. We just know what's safe for us. We know what we want to do. We feel it in our entire body, but we cannot explain to others. So it's like, yeah, I'm just doing that. Like, no worries. Like, don't worry about me. Don't worry about where I'm going. You know, come along if you want right now. I just need some alone space and you'll see. (laughs) You'll see Mm -hmm. when it comes. Yeah. Does that feel more flexible? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It also... That sounds more of what I've come to doing and what feels nicer now. And also this being in surrounding that surroundings that are uh, nurturing and a good fit helps as well, because now I am in circles, although I'm in lots of different circles, wherever I am, people are very understanding and I don't feel the need to explain myself and all my friends know where Sometimes I don't text back for a couple of days. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's fine. And the same goes for them. You know, when they don't text back for a few days, it's fine. I know where we have a good connection. And when I need to text back right away, I'll text back right away. But if it can wait, then it will wait. Yes, yes. Yes, you also brought up something about the 4-1. You want relationships, friendships, you know, even jobs where you are able to kind of engage when you need to and then step out because you trust, you want to be able to trust that the other people are able to take care of themselves, that they you don't want to like be holding their hands all the time. And I can imagine even as <laughs> your business starts to take form, you don't want to be like, we need to check in five times a day. We need to do a voice message. We need to do that. I don't think that's something that will be beneficial for your energy either. Yeah, I was thinking because I have a friend who does a similar thing and she's all about like channels where she's communicating with people all the time. And for her, it's amazing. Like she's a manifester as well. And she's very like communicating all the time. And I'm like, that's amazing for her. But just her telling me about it is like, sounds so draining to me. Your body is like, because so your only motor it's the heart center that's the ego and that's like a very tiny it's a mighty center it's here about like the community it's also about your needs like what do I want in my life what do I want to create but in order for this motor to like sustain itself it has to do work that it really loves and then go through a period of rest and that was something that really hit me because I have the the ego and also the spleen defined that's my only motor i if I work, it has to be work that I love, but also, I also love to rest. This is how my motor refuses itself to rest. And sometimes it's horizontal. Sometimes it's just scrolling on Instagram because it's fun. Other times it's just lying by the sun, you know, the rest, like 
giving yourself to rest is actually not you being out of commission. This is how your ego center is actually refilling itself. So, you know, when we show up in business and the pressure to show up all the time might make our defined hearts like, I want to prove myself I can do it because it also wants to prove this little will center wants to commit proof, but also knows that when you're taking your time to rest, you're going to come back and everything you do will be so much more efficient. The one newsletter you sent a month can be impactful, is probably impactful in many ways already. Or the conversation you have with somebody, a stranger or somebody in your uni can also like move them in ways that you're you're not even aware of. You're like they're bringing them along your train ride without knowing. Yeah. Yeah. And also like a while when I learned that like about motor centers and energy and all of that, somebody said that you need to take care of the defined motor centers you have that you don't get into that in their way and then I realized that I tend to use my commitment and willpower for others first you know oh, uni yes. deadlines or other jobs where I'm like oh there are other people who told me to do it I need to put that first and like a couple of weeks ago I switched that and prioritized my own project and that was such a huge shift in my energy as well I had so much more energy and fun and drive and the beautiful thing is that everything else moved along with it I'm still oh. keeping my deadlines and I'm still doing helpful stuff for other people and the projects where I'm needed but it's not this because it's so hard <laughs> to work for those commitments even if the task itself isn't that hard but it's just so exhausting if it's not if it's driven from just this, I have to do this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because when we're doing from that place, it's almost like our body is telling us we're depleted or like there's no energy going there. And we're still trying to push because this like mighty little center can literally move mountains if it wants to. But you also have the undefined sacral. Sometimes that's the recipe for burnout because then we're like, oh, we got to. And then the root and all of that's like not knowing when enough is enough. Because we're so like amplifying all those other energies. And then once we're on our own, we crash. That's like, what did we do? But something as simple when you were sharing, like I shifted, I prioritized what I wanted to do. And I could see even your energy was like, ah, <laughs> you know, and things didn't break down. Things still worked. And that is so powerful for anybody that's listening, even a reminder for myself, like, yeah, things do fall into place when we allow <laughs> ourselves to take up space to, to do the things that we want to do yeah yeah and also I, I think I had a similar experience to you with being in a office job you know yeah. agency world and almost burning out like teeny almost like oh. right before <laughs> the moment and with with all the meditation and everything I did and I was like how why <laughs> and now looking at that you know through the human design lens it just makes a lot of I always got stuff done like quicker than other people a lot of the time but then I was depleted and was supposed to sit there another four hours <laughs> yeah yeah because you can if you commit you will get it done but yeah. it will be the cost of your own energy yeah, and yeah. I thought everybody was like that. And learning that other people can work for eight hours and still do something in the evening was mind-blowing for me. I thought everybody was just crashing. <laughs> yeah, I thought I had to because I also did like health coaching certification, holistic wellness. And I thought, oh, I need to do more green juice. I need to eat better. I told, it was all those stories that I was like, I am not doing enough when it was like, I'm doing too much. <laughs> you yeah. just needed to rest and try, stop trying to keep up with the world. And that was, I think that's what my mind, my body needed because the stubborn me was like, oh, those are the things, biohacking, all that, that I don't look into anymore. But I was so curious about it. And then realizing, no, my energy just needs rest. Why, why was I fighting that? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And like your root, so this is the center for like adrenaline, for stress. That's like a pressure center that gets us into action. You have a lot of root activations. I think it is 
one of the most activated ones in your center, actually. Out of all the undefined centers you have, that means that you, when you amplify stress, you feel it in your body. Like you take in a lot of like, oh, okay, time to do. So when you're around people that are like, we've got to get all those things done, you amplify it. And it's almost like your body goes on this autopilot. It's like, okay, let me go. <laughs> let me follow you doing it. But the risk of that is that we're always running around trying to check things off the list to relieve this pressure that we feel without really checking in with our body. So the wisdom of the undefined root is acknowledging, oh, okay, I'm feeling my nervous system is agitated by all the things I need to do. What is really a priority? I'm going to feel like a, I want to release the pressure that I feel because I feel it physically. I notice when I'm like, and it's things I love doing too, but it's just like so much. So I'm like, okay, ground my body first. What is a must do today? How can I do it in a way that is the most supportive of me? So notice when you're amplifying, when the center is defined, it's like, I'm going to want to do all the things. I see the beauty in life. I see the things I want to fight for. I see like, how can I grow and be ambitious? I see the patterns that I need to focus on, what I can start. Like, you know, that's the kind of pressure you amplify because of the gates that you have. You have like the 53, which is like, what do I begin and then you have the 54, which is like, ooh, okay, ambition. What can I like grow my career? How can I, you know, get better at that? You know, you're curious too. And the 38 is like the gate of the fighter. What do I want to fight for? What is important for me? So, you know, whenever you take in that root energy, it's like all this gets activated. But then remember, it's like, ooh, okay, maybe I don't need to get into action necessarily, not right away. So your, I think your meditation and your mindfulness practice is really what helps you prioritize and cleanse which is you know it's such a natural thing you orient to but it also helps you manage that pressure you experience yeah yeah that makes sense and also for example I make sure I'm not at uni physically too much of the time like just in a room with a lot of people with very ambitious <laughs> a lot of on their plates and things to do and a lot of deadlines and all of that because especially in bigger seminars or when it's exam season I feel it you know so much in my body everybody's anxiety and stress <laughs> yeah. and all of it and so I make sure on the one hand I love the surrounding there because of I can learn and I can do all my research and at the same time I notice it's very exhausting and I need to make sure that I get far away from it and get grounded and into my body and into my movement practices because otherwise it's yeah I, <laughs> I don't do well yeah yeah because like with the root activations and two of your gates the 54 and a 53 from your incarnation cross so our incarnation cross energies in our profile it's almost like 70 percent of how we show up of the energies so having two gates in the root center that is undefined which is like pulling in people to connect with all the time it's also one of your biggest lessons is learning how do I work with this undefined root how do I release and you already shared the examples like during exam times I know that's not the best time for me other times I love being around uni that simple distinction is the wisdom of the root of your body center of like okay this is the place for me along with your identity center right now <laughs> this is not the place for me when it gets too you know too much because you also have a lot of the openness in the other centers that are like taking it in and then it just becomes energy overload because our body is meant to take in but not to like have a buffet every day for the rest of our lives right huh? yeah how is all of this landing so far yeah it's interesting it's good to because of my one line I guess and my research stuff you know I can dive deep into all the explanations you can find online and it's nice to have you explain them and point things out and draw connections um yeah and just seeing that it's all useful you know like <laughs> that there's not a good design a bad design that that it's all something you can draw from and that 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 it just the difference in energy is what's helpful in the end you know with everybody else bringing different things I find that 
super fascinating. Yeah, yeah. It allows us to almost surrender to what we already knew about ourselves but with more permission. It's like, oh, okay, I like this. I like to be alone. I'm not a loner. That's what my, my parents used to worry. It's like, oh, does she have any friends? Like she spent so much time alone. I'm like, I love it. I need it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something else that I had written in my notes when I was looking at your chart, because, you know, you ask about business or you share it about like business is that you have an undefined Ajna. So again, this is not, you don't have consistent mental energy to be processing things all of the time to like going deep into like, you know, you might go into rabbit holes when they're fascinating. And then after a while, your brain is like, okay, not a lot of mental energy here. But you have gate 17 defined two times and gate 11. So gate 11 is the gate of ideas. So you probably have like a gazillion ideas about all the things that could be done, how can survive, like support the collective yourself, like gazillion of them. But yeah. again, unless the rest of your energetics align and it's like, ooh, okay, the urge comes through it, be open to those ideas. You can write them down so they're not like spiraling in your head, but you don't need to act on all of them, especially because you don't have a channel that's connecting to your throat to express it right away. Same with opinions. So gate 17, it's almost like you're watching the world and you're watching patterns. You're picking up things and the way you express or share if things are working or not might come up through opinions. You probably have an opinion about everything and that's fine. That's just part of, you know, how you see the world. Both of these energies are projected, so they need the invitation. So unless somebody asks for your ideas or your opinions, sometimes when you do share, you know, out of nowhere, it might not resonate. Even though you're a manifester, you can tell them, I'm sharing an opinion. It still might not resonate. It's, you know, the manifester informing doesn't mean that you're immune to being human. You, we still have these projected energies. So noticing like not everybody is worthy of your ideas and opinions unless they recognize you, unless you also have the energy to move that. Right. So because, yeah, I, I resonate very much with having ideas all the time, yeah. also having opinions all the time, but <laughs> I feel like I'm more used to, or it feels more natural for me to just wait for people to ask me before I give them, because I see that that's most helpful. And with the ideas, I'm a bit more unsure, like, how do I know which idea to follow? That's like such a big question. I can only share from my experience. It's like if it's an, an idea that really wants to get our attention, it keeps coming up. Right. And sometimes like writing it down, it's like, okay, I wrote it down and then I never look back at it. Other ideas, either the community or like I might share or I might post something or, you know, just sharing to see if it lands or not. And then I see people like, oh, I want more of this. And then I see if I get energized by thinking about this or by testing it. And with your undefined identity center, I think you won't know unless you do something with it. It's like, okay, I'll write it down or like, maybe I'll try this for a week. I don't need to commit to everything I set my mind on, right? The defined heart wants to commit, but also knowing like you don't need to commit unless there's energy. You can play, you can put it out there. It's like, what do you think about this? Cool. You know, that can be part of the informing, just throwing ideas out there. What do people think about this? And then come back. You know, there's ways to play with this without having to go through the 10 steps of it. Yeah. yeah. How it actually works. Oh, sorry. You got frozen right after the, oh. the... <laughs> yeah, you're no, back no, that's... That, that's quite useful because now I can just play with what to do with ideas, you know, what, how to get, get the feedback and what you said about them coming back <laughs> when they're meant to be realized that makes sense as well. Because sometimes I have things that, yeah, ideas. And then a friend of mine is telling me, oh, there's this thing I, I really want. And I was like, wait, I had this idea of working on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the most beautiful things because we amplify so many things that are in the collective and knowing that we're not here to do everything by ourselves and also 
we don't need to act on everything. And I remember when I first started my business, I was like, oh, all those ideas. I can support people. I can do this. Uh, and I was like putting it out there, you know, with my advertising background design, I would make beautiful pages and never share with anyone because I was terrified. And if I did share, I'd be like, nobody wants this. What is wrong with me? And then I realized, wait, first, <laughs> you haven't built your capacity. You've been overworking yourself, you know, like a headless chicken. <laughs> and you want to also grow. Maybe you need to rest first. And the more I kind of allow my rhythm to play out and also hold those ideas and be like okay if it's meant to be right now then it'll happen and a lot of times effortlessly like the fourth line it really is magic it does bring opportunities when we least expect it and the way to take care of this is really just taking care of our foundations our relationships are we spending time with the, our favorite people our friends the things that are making us exciting and that is almost like our energy is doing the work for us mm -hmm. And then it comes back and it's like, okay. And it's almost like learning about all the strategies and then releasing <laughs> what works, what doesn't work. How can I, you know, tweak it so that it works for me, which is the most important part because we're always changing and we're going through different cycles. Some days you might feel chattier and you might want to write a newsletter two times a month, you know, okay, how can I hold with that? And then allow myself to change it. For example, in the winter, I'm feeling more quiet. I'm feeling more, you know, create a space for that. And you'll know with practice, you know, the more you lean into that, the more you'll be like, oh, this is an urge coming through. I need, you know, uninterrupted space for two weeks. I don't know. Sometimes we don't know how long. Or it's like, oh, okay, I'm pushing a little bit right now. Can I go rest and then come back with fresh eyes? Or maybe it's time to release this thing that I had a lot of fun working on for two weeks, but I'm not feeling it anymore. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So cool. I know. How are you feeling? I've asked you this so many times because I feel like I felt, I was like, oh, 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 oh. and it's like, okay. No, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm like soaking it all up. Yeah. Interesting. Like, I I could like, dive in endlessly as well mm -hmm. but yeah makes makes a lot of sense and just being more easygoing about things not being super clear or defined like with the ideas that you know just play with it and see what happens yeah. is really cool like it's so much and the same with um the networking or opportunities like I genuinely care about people I like being around people and seeing them and being with them and figuring out who they are what they want what they need and just knowing that when I allow myself to do that I don't need to do anything else you know yeah. that yeah the rest takes care of itself that's really nice yeah yeah that's such a beautiful reminder for us. All. I felt the relaxation as you were talking. I'm like, yes, this is a <laughs> reminder. <laughs> we're already doing the work. We're already doing the things that we don't notice that we're doing. Yeah. Thank you for that, Yana. Any outstanding thoughts? Anything that's lingering? Mm, I'm just taking a second to digest. Um, yeah. <laughs> replay a lot. Uh, the chart and everything you told me one more thing be before we end it mm -hmm. just because I'm curious and now it's the chance <laughs> yeah um, when there are two colors in one mm -hmm. panel or you know those lines um what does it mean if it's too complicated, we can skip it. <laughs> no, not at all. That's such a great question. It means that it's activated on our personality, like our mental side, and also our body physical side, our unconscious side. Sorry, now you were gone. I got cut off, right? Yeah. It means that the gate is activated on your personality, your like mind side, your conscious side, and then also your physical, your unconscious side so you feel this energy moving through like in a conscious way and unconscious so right. anything that is red it's like our our body's consciousness and black is like our our mental consciousness our personality those are the energies that we're more aware of 
versus the ones that a lot of your root activations are unconscious. So you might not even know how the pressure activates your body. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's fun. There's so many layers. I think we can look at a chart for maybe like years and years and find out more things about it. So this is an invitation to get curious with ourselves mm -hmm. and keep playing. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Thank you for being here for sharing your chart, pieces of your chart with others as well. And I'm sure a lot of what we talked through today will resonate with a lot of people about what they understand as a manifester. What does it mean to have this fixedness? So thank you for sharing your wisdom, Yana. Yeah, thank you for all the insights, taking the time. It was, yeah, super interesting. I'm sure I'm going to go back into the chart and figure stuff out and maybe listen back to our conversations and have some more insights coming up. Yes, and please share <laughs> when you have insights like this came out because I think we're all learning from each other. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, an archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are. <laughs>